volts, amps, watts, and ohms. All right, so if you are new to the electrical field or electronics and you're trying to figure out how many like ohms of current flow through the voltage of the resistor, through the flux capacitor, like you don't know what any of these things mean and you're trying to get it all straight, this video is for you. So very simply, uh, I'm gonna go through each one of the quantities uh, or the terms that we talk about and uh, try to make it like an easy explanation of how that works in a circuit. So let's start out with voltage. When you say volts, what does that mean? Voltage equals pressure. So in an electrical circuit, you've got little itty bitty charges inside of a wire and when you apply a voltage from one side of that wire to the other side of that wire, there's a difference of potential. There's like an up and a down, or there's a push and a pull more accurately. In AC, electric uh, alternating current, that push and pull happen simultaneously 60 times a second, they change directions. In DC, it's just one constant push in one direction. So voltage is the amount of pressure. Well, another thing we call it is the difference of potential, right? Like the difference of potential is gonna be 120 volts at like a wall outlet here in the US. Um, you might have an air conditioner outside that's 240 volts. So instead of 120 volts, now you're talking 240 volts. You might be in an industrial factory or something where they've got 480 volts. Um, the incoming power a lot of times to the power pole, to the transformer at your property is at 7,200 volts. And that little transformer transforms it down to 240 volts and sends it safely into your house at that low voltage. All it means is it's a change in pressure. Now the letter for voltage is V. A lot of times you will see uh, in calculations and things in the electrical world that we represented as E or electromotive force. When we do calculations, we'll have something like E times I equals P, um, which is voltage times amperes equals power. <laughs> it's weird that they don't use those units, but in physics they use a lot of these things so they don't want people getting confused. Anyways, so just know voltage is V, or if you're doing calculations and you're taking your electrical test and you're using the Ohm's law formula wheel, E is also voltage. Now to test voltage, you're gonna take a multimeter, you're gonna put it to the V setting, and you're going to hook up between two leads. Now what it, that is saying when you get a reading, say it's 12 volts. It means that there's very little pressure that is pushing current through this multimeter, but you always test voltage between two points. Voltage is never like you're gonna to touch one thing and get a voltage reading. It's always a, a uh, pressure between two points. Now, when testing for amperage and you're on that amp setting, it's not gonna detect the amount of voltage or pressure, it's going to detect the amount of current that's flowing from one of these leads through the multimeter and back to the other one. So it's still testing something that's going on in the circuit, but you're just testing the flow or the rate of flow or the strength of the field more accurately. All right, the next one is resistance. Uh, there's, it's really impedance, there's three different things. There's reactance and there is resistance. So within impedance, we have two different types. We have reactance and we have resistance. Impedance is kind of like an all encompassing term. It just means like opposition. So like if you get a whole bunch of runners running a race and then all of a sudden you get like a bunch of cows that like fly in and then they're all like banging together and they can't get through. That's opposition, right? Uh, same thing with impedance. They're being, as runners, they're being impeded. They can't keep going. And so the same thing is in electrical circuits. Pretty much all of electrical, everything, is finding little things like re resistors or diodes or light bulbs or capacitors or inductors or anything. Vacuum cleaners, TVs, radios. Like this little guy, he's pretty, he's pretty resistive. <laughs> Nah, he's pretty chill, man. He, like, he's like all about the yes. He's a yes man. Anyways, impedance. If you were to plug a vacuum, a vacuum cleaner motor itself is a certain resistor or a certain kind of impedance. It's a little different because it's a motor. We'll go into a whole different video later to talk about the different types. But usually when you're talking about a DC circuit like this battery, and coming out of it into the circuit into whatever you're trying to power, whatever load is hooked up to it, like a light bulb 
we're gonna say that that light bulb is resisting. It has resistance because we're talking about DC. Resistance can still be used to talk about AC, um, just for ease of understanding, resistance is just a type of impedance that we're talking about with a DC battery. Reactance is something that we talk about with circuits that specifically have inductors or capacitors in the circuit. So most of the time you're not going to be talking about reactance. You're going to be talking about resistance. Most of the time out in the field, we're talking about resistance. We'll be like, hey, go check the resistance on this thing, blah, 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 blah. We just use resistance. There's a lot of hotty toddy people that like to get all fancy with themselves and start being like, but that's not resistance, bro. It's impedance. It's not impedance, bro. It's reactance. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. You know what I mean? You can call it impedance, but then you sound like you're trying to be fancy still. Um, a lot of times I will say impedance though because once I came up through the ranks and I realized when I'm talking about resistance that I was actually talking about reactance, I was like, fuck, I've been saying the wrong thing forever. So I tend to say impedance, um, but if I'm talking to like a helper that I know has no idea, either way, I'll just be like, resistance, bro. I don't wanna confuse them. I'll be like, oh shit, there's like a resistance and there's an impedance now? No, no, impedance is just the, the total opposition in all ways reactance plus resistance in a circuit is impedance i think i've probably kicked this horse enough right you understand it cool when you put a resistance in a circuit what it does is actually decreases the rate of flow it doesn't add more pressure the voltage doesn't rise or anything like that what it does it slows the current down to a usable level if we don't have a resistance in a circuit you might have two wires and you try to touch them together and they blow up. There's so much current trying to go without any kind of resistance. Electricity can be really dangerous, so you don't want to have a situation where there's just no resistance. We always take a pressure, we apply that pressure to conductors that go to a load. So when that resistance is there, a certain amount of current will flow that's useful and not dangerous and that resistance will do something. It'll either make a motor spin or it'll make a light bulb come on or it'll make a speaker like bump <laughs> or it can make like heating elements inside of a toaster turn on. But that resistor is there and the amount of resistance that the resistor has is going to dictate how much current is actually gonna flow when we apply pressure to those conductors. Now with resistance, you're gonna see this little omega sign and what that is, is ohms. So when we talk about resistance, we say, ohms. If you're talking about reactants, there's some other things, XL and XC and all that. Don't worry about that. In, in general, when we see the little ohm sign, uh, we are talking about resistance. Now, when you're testing resistance, you're not going to test like a battery and try to get a certain amount of resistance because there isn't resistance. These, the terminal inside of here and the terminal in here are not connected. It's not a conductor. There's an electrolyte inside of here, like a chemical, that will allow current to flow, but they're, they're like really isolated from each other. So you're not gonna test anything. All right, and then the last one that we are going to cover is wattage or electrical power. Now there's a thing called VA and there's a thing called watts. And a lot of times you'll see equipment rated like 70 kVA or it'll be rated 70,000 watts or 70 watts. So usually you can kind of think as a VA is a volt amp, but in, the, in a calculation that we use volts times amps equals watts. So a volt amp is equal to a watt, but they're not the same thing. When we use wattage, we're talking about how much power is being consumed or how much is being expended. So if we have a light bulb, light bulbs are rated 60 watts, 100 watts, because they're actually expending energy out of them. They're radiating heat and light out of them. They're not storing any energy, they're expelling energy. So anything that we talk about that the purpose of it, a toaster, heating element, anything that's like we're trying to get heat off of this thing and we're trying to get light off of it, anything like that is gonna be rated in wattage. If you're talking about VA or volt amps or KVA, which is thousands of volt amps, like a lot of big transformers that you're gonna see, uh, transformers up on poles, they're rated like 50 KVA, 50,000 volt amps. The reason it's not 50,000 watts is because that transformer is not a thing that's just like radiating heat and consuming power. That thing is actually storing power. It's creating an electric field because there's two different parts of a circuit. There's a primary circuit and a secondary circuit. 
So it's actually storing power. And when we start talking about things like capacitors, we're actually storing power inside of this thing, right? So when we store electrical energy, we're talking with VA or volt amps, but when we expend it, we're talking about wattage. Now, for the wattage to change in something, it depends on how much resistance there is in the thing, right? So a light bulb with very little resistance, because the current is gonna be so high because there's nothing impeding it, the wattage that it produces is gonna be really high too because there's just no resistance. There's so much current flowing through it that like, it's gonna, it's gonna be like a really bright light. Wattage can be low though too. If you do have like a, a light bulb filament that's like really long or like double wound or something like that. If you have multiple heating elements, really big heating elements, there's so much resistance in that inductor. There's so much reactance technically. See what I mean? <laughs> there's so much resistance in that conductor that there's not enough current that can flow to generate enough wattage or enough heat for that to be expended. So the, the resistor is everything. In an electrical circuit, that's what you need to understand. The load, the load, how it's designed is the most important part. When we have a voltage present at a building, that doesn't matter. We're just saying we got like a certain pressure at this building. The amount of current you can't change anything about current. Current just happens based off of the size of the resistor or the size of the motor, which has resistance in it or the size of whatever you're plugging in, whatever thing there. And as a result of you applying pressure over this resistance, current's gonna flow and it's gonna either expel a whole bunch of energy, which is wattage, or it's going to store a bunch of energy, which is VA. So. I hope that helped. It was probably a lot longer than it needed to be. I was hoping to do that in like five minutes. I hope you got some value out of it. But if you're interested in figuring out like how an actual circuit works and seeing me draw it on the drawing board, there's a really rad video right here. Uh, I made it recently, you should check that out. If you're curious about things like neutrals and grounds and why we bond them out at electrical services, check this video out here, pretty rad video. Thank you guys so much for your attention. I love you crazy people and I will see you in the next one.